everyone, my name is Andrew, and this is Canadian Starships. So let's see what's on the bench this week. This week on the bench, we are finishing off with that Repair Enterprise E. It is going to go out to the client. It will never be the same as it once was when it was first made. When you pop it open and you do repairs, it never goes quite back the way it used to, and it never quite looks like it used to. That said, there might be another Enterprise E down the road. We'll jump off that bridge when we get to it. We're also going to be looking at the two Enterprise E's currently on the bench. In between updates, I did manage to get all four nacelles done as far as being lighted. Now, I've got to say, it is the most tedious thing next to the windows on the entire kit. I would love if round two would retool those engines so that they were done top and bottom. That would save a ton of time, make the job a lot easier, because quite literally it takes a day of work for me to do one of those nacelles from start to finish, get it all wired up, soldered up, connected, finished, closed off. It takes a day's work. So it's been quite the journey getting this far. I will show you those all completed. And then I don't know just how far we're going to get in this update. I've only got a few days left because doing those nacelles took quite a bit longer than expected. We'll try to get some more lighting into the ship, maybe into the uh, the rest of the lighting in the secondary hall. Maybe we'll get into the saucer. We'll just kind of play it by ear. It might be a short update. I have no idea. So let's get right at it. But before we get started, why not take a moment and click the subscribe button. And while you're here, click on that notification bell so you don't miss a single video. Here's one of the Enterprise E's with the nacelles lighted. This one over here is just open. This one has some diffusion laid in and just with the straight up kit part on top. Now that'll be sanded down, frosted, etc. And we'll either use the photo etch or we'll try maybe doing a paint feature on that to make it look as close to the studio model as possible. But you don't see any hot spots. There are zero hot spots. And that's because of a combination of the 2020 LEDs, the uh, really small LED strip that's in there, and the fact that it can sit completely on the bottom so that there's space between the LEDs and the diffusion layer up top. The more space you have between your lights and the diffusion, the better diffused it's gonna be. And you can't tell that there's LED strip in there at all by looking at it. So that came out really, really nicely. And the other ship looks exactly the same way. I just don't wanna run both of them off of the one Arduino pairing at the same time because that's not the way it's gonna be when they're put together in the kit. But this looks really nice. You've got your flashers going on in the back. You've got the Bizarre effect up front, which will be sped up so that it looks a little bit better. Keep in mind that these are currently being masked off to uh, so, so that when I do the painting, it protects them. So even through the yellow masking tape, it looks pretty nice there. So coming along pretty nicely, we're gonna move on to some other lighting on the secondary hull and probably on the saucer as well. May not really look like it, but we're moving on to internal window lighting. And this is a part of the old strip that I was using for the nacelles before I realized that they didn't fit. And they're perfectly fine, so I'm using them for the internal lighting. So I've just cut off the first little bit here, and it is inside right in here. You can see these copper bits. That's uh, where the adhesive has been removed well not really the adhesive but the backing on the adhesive and you can see these points uh, so i have it right now epoxied to the pylon insert points in the back here and i've just got my forceps holding it up it's just kind of cantilevered here to hold this onto here while the epoxy sets i've also added a piece of styrene in here straddling the two pylon um, insert points here and that is how I'm going to secure the bottom of the strip here because I don't want it to rise up too far so that uh, all of those windows in the back there get the appropriate lighting. I'm also going to put a lighting strip in the front but I'll get this back one fully installed and then I will get the one basically on the belly here on the inside and that those two strips should give enough light to really light that secondary hull nicely. And because we're using such 
um, small wiring, some such thin wiring, uh, we shouldn't have the whole window areas blocked by wires on this. Doing this handheld so I can get right in there. Just wanting to make sure I get the right focus, but you should be able to see the strip of lighting tucked in the back there on top of those um, mounting points for the pylons. And that is tucked in there so that all of the windows along the back will get some lighting because if I just put the lighting in this section here, it won't really reach into the back. So you can see that lighting there, and since I'm handheld, let's see if I can just get this underneath here so you can see where that strip is underneath. Can't really tell if that turned out well or not, but hopefully you can see in there and see that. Now I'm going to be putting another strip right in here between the deflector dish and the post mount in there. But before I do that, I need to make sure that the light that's in here, I uh, can't remember if it's a strobe or if it's a constant on, but I need to make sure that that is functioning properly before I cover it with the strip light. So I'm going to get that plugged in test it and as long as it works we're installing that strip of lighting these there's going to be two strips of eight leds that are going to be lighting up the windows on the secondary hall and the one that goes in here will also be lighting up those windows on the neck cover i've double checked the footage from first contact and it is indeed a flasher on the bottom there so i've made sure that that is working properly and that is in the same timing as the flashers that are on the nacelles so we are good to install the strip lighting on the inside. The second secondary hole has some strip lighting going in right now. The epoxy holding it in is just curing in this precariously held state. Um, then I will epoxy it onto the front end and I need to get the other strip inside. So while that is curing, I figured I would get the phaser strip started on the saucer sections. Now these strips of LEDs, these uh, 2020 LEDs have been so important on this build that uh, warp chiller grill effect looks so good with these and we're going to use these for the phaser strips as well. Now I've sized these out already and if I am correct um, this will take exactly half of a strip to do one saucer which is perfect because that just means that one of these strips will do the two saucers I need to do. Now we're not going to be putting them on the bottom saucer just because there's no clearance for that, but we will get that phaser effect, that really nice high density phaser effect on the top saucer. So I'm going to get this sized up, wired up, installed, and then we'll be working on the, uh, the light box basically that we're going to need to build with the phaser strip LED and uh, that's important to isolate that light from the rest of the ship so you don't get red phaser or orange phaser light coming out of the windows. LED strips wired up and testing. I will get them installed into the saucer section. The way that I'm going to install these is by first just tacking them into place with hot melt glue. I've got this warming up and then once that is all set I will go around the perimeter and epoxy in place and it will not go. After that we have to build lighting boxes for those uh, so that the light does not bleed into the rest of the saucer section. The LED strip has been installed into the saucer section here. I tacked it into place with hot melt glue and then went through and added epoxy all the way so it is really nice and secure. It's had a good amount of time to set. So I'm just going to grab my plug for my Arduino and plug it in so that you can see what it looks like with the effect turned on. And there we go. So this is the underside. This is the bis oh, this is the business section. Uh, it uh, did that weird coloration only because the uh, connection to the breadboard isn't very secure. That won't be a problem once it is fully, fully permanently wired up. But if I turn it over, Gives you a really nice look at what this is going to look like once it's all done. Let me turn off one of the overhead lights and that'll give you a little bit of a better look there. Nothing's been light blocked on it so far, so it is spilling out all over the place.
but this gives you an idea of what this phaser effect is going to look like. The key to this effect on this kit is the use of those 2020 LEDs and of course, Danny's coating. One of the benefits about doing two of these back to back or side by side is that I can show you both the outside effect and the inside effect at the same time. So on this one, it's been fully properly installed. It's just tacked in with the glue, uh, the hot melt glue on this one, but it shows you both the way that it looks on the outside and the way that it is functioning on the inside. Now I realized as I was installing this one that I forgot to do the light blocking on windows I want off. So I'm gonna have to do that on the saucer section here. But this gives you a really good look at the phaser effect both on the outside and the inside, uh, giving you an idea of how this is all coming together. And now we finally have an integrated lighting test of all of the effects we have installed in the ship so far. Currently we have the chiller grills, the buzzards, the one set of flashers, constant on on the nacelles we've got some interior lighting we have the phaser effect happening there if we go down below here you'll start to see how those windows on the secondary hull are looking you'll also see that we have the deflector dish light it up now that's just a temporary color there i'll make sure that that's a bit more yellow colored rather than the green and we have a test run of that led in the quantum torpedo launching area so this is really starting to turn out very nice indeed now take note that the ship is not fully assembled the saucer is just sitting on top and the parts of the saucer are not connected together so any light leaks or issues like that are not going to be present on the final model this is just a mock-up test of the lighting and that's going to do it for this week's update from what's on the bench i know this video is a little bit late but the amount of work that's gone into it has been very time consuming and tedious i'm really happy with the amount of work that's been done but i mean those warp nacelles are just a pain to wire and the spaghetti wiring that you get while you're working on this keeping track of all that that can be challenging but i am really happy with the way that all the lighting is turning out all the lighting effects thank you very much to danny the programmer for being able to do all that work and uh, it is turning out so nicely so if you have enjoyed this update make sure that you hit that like button if you're new to my channel or you haven't done so yet why not hit that subscribe button today you'll make me very happy if you do but for now my name is andrew and this is canadian starships but before you go if you're interested in all of this programming stuff check out this interview i did with danny the programmer have a great day